ourselves miserable in this kind of situation, we don't know how to praise the Lord. And when these things happen to us, as, as our pastor always say, we need to learn how to respond and not simply react. Because like, if we're like Peter, like in the preaching yesterday, we react according to our emotions. We react according to how we felt at a given time. We're going to find ourselves in such a big trouble. But when we are like Paul, who, who follows the will of God, no matter what happens, no matter if he's being stoned or he's being put in prison or, he's being, uh, uh, or people are listening to him, all, he con uh, all he's concerned about was obeying the will of God. If we, if we find ourselves in that kind of situation and we apply what, Pete, uh, what Paul is doing, then we will find joy in our hearts that cannot be explained also by circumstances. That's why uh, here in this uh, chapter, uh, here in this passage, we're going to see what happened in the life of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. But we're going to focus more on Leah's point of view. And um, for the rest of it, we're just going to uh, 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 breeze right through that. And I believe Preacher Wilson will, uh, will preach more about that. But we're looking at Leah. And the way we're going to do it this morning is we're looking at the story, okay, uh, from verse 13 to 35. And after looking at these verses, then we're going to go to our preaching. So uh, my, my, uh, uh, I'm pleading to you this morning, don't fall asleep, okay? It's like a Sunday school lesson. Kwentuhan muna tayo bago natin tignan yung mga points ng preaching natin. And um, we're going to pick up the story here in verse number 13. And we're going back to verse 10 later. It says here in verse number uh, 13, And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him. And embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. Verse 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what shall thy wages be. And before this um, uh, encounter of Laban and Jacob, Jacob first met Rachel before, before Laban. And we know the situation here. Jacob was running away. From the mess that he did okay he deceived his father he deceived his brother and he was running away he's trying to hide from all these mistakes and he found himself uh, in this place but before that he first met Rachel in verse 10 and it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel the daughter of Laban his mother's brother and the sheep uh, of Laban so basically Rachel is his cousin okay uh, uh, Laban his mother's brother and Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And, and she ran and told her father. Now, we can only imagine how Rachel felt. A stranger comes to her, kisses her, shouts, and cries in front of her. That's all, all of that in the, mom, the, moment, that, uh, the moment that Jacob, uh, uh, that, uh, that Jacob saw her. I don't know about you guys, but if that happens today, we might say that the guy is crazy. But Rachel must have been so beautiful, or, or at least in the eyes of Jacob, that it warranted kissing her, raising his voice, and crying. Meron na po ba sa atin ganun ang reaction? Para mas, para mas matindi pa yan, it's worse than uh, those uh, uh, fan... Fine, uh, fine girls of uh, uh, BTS. Like when you see BTS, ah, you're shouting, right? But for Jacob, he even cried. I don't know what, what, what his crying is about, but what he's crying about, but he cried uh, um, in, in front of Rachel. He, she must be that beautiful. And I, I don't know, we can only imagine, I don't know how you reacted, how you react when you see a beautiful person, but I'm sure that you don't cry. Because of it, uh, you don't kiss them. Uh, 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 that's for a fact. But that's what Jacob. Th that's what uh, uh, Jacob uh, did. In verse twelve, it tells us here that Jacob told Rachel who he was, and they are a famous family from Abraham to Isaac, and then them. And they are rich people, and, and people know them to be rich, and and, and uh, they have a lot of uh, riches. And they and Rachel knew who Jacob was because of Rebecca, okay? That uh, he, they know Jacob's family. This is impo important to understand why Laban treated Jacob the way he treated Jacob. Because if we're just going to look at those verses without looking at the rest of the passage, we're going to think that Laban is hospitable and kind and, he, and he's just a, 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 an altogether good person. But we know better than that because we know what Laban's uh, uh, plan really was um, 
for all this for uh, all this time now we know that laban is hospitable okay during those times it is god's command for people to be hospitable especially to strangers okay uh, when, when when these people are para ko si ano pastor pasay na okay uh, tanggalin natin yan when these people uh when these people uh, come to you, you have to accept them and be hospitable to them, be kind to them. But add to that the fact that Jacob was his nephew. Now, he, he is, it's understandable that he is going to be kind to him. And he's going to give him something, uh, some favor. But we know better because we have read the whole chapter and we know that Laban was a deceitful man. And based on that, we know that at the back of his mind is the wealth that Jacob can bring him. Because Jacob is a wealthy person, even though he's not bringing all the wealth with him right there, but he knows that eventually he's going to inherit all these things. That's why, that's why we must be careful when, when, when a person is also kind and flattering, all these things. It's good to have a kind friend, okay, that they t tell you nice things. But if all they tell you are nice things, that is not a friend. Okay? That's why we have to be careful when we, when we meet people. Oh, you're so beautiful. You're so kind. You, you sing so well. And, and I have never met a person uh, better than you. All these things. We have to be careful when, when, the, when, when, the, when, when we meet that kind of person. Proverbs 29.5 says, A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Usually when these people are flattering you all this time and doesn't have one bad thing to say about you, they have other plans in their minds. Uh, Proverbs 28, 23, it says here, He that rebuketh a man afterward shall find more favor than he that flattereth with his tongue. It's good to have kind friends telling you what uh, the good things about you, but it's better to have friends who will rebuke you as well. People who will say to your face, not behind your back, to your face the things that you are doing wrong. That's why we have to be careful. We have to seek for friends who are honest enough to tell us what's wrong. Right? Uh, not, not just saying all the good things about us. I know my wife knows that I'm handsome, but she never says that. I don't know why. I, I want her to say it more, but she doesn't say it. Right? Instead, she criticizes my tummy all the time. Okay, I know it's a bad example, but you, you get it. Right? Just not a person who always says good things about you. Okay? And, and if you have a friend who says good things and bad things to your face at the same time, you have to treasure that kind of friend. But Laban here, He's a man with flattery words. He has nothing but good, good things for Jacob. Why? Because we know his plan. Okay? In verse 16 to 18, it says here, All right, uh, And Laban had two daughters, and the name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And uh, Leah was tender-eyed, but, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, the younger brother. Now, the favor that Laban was giving Jacob was not to give him an easier service because Jacob wants to stay there. He eventually stayed there for uh, uh, 20 years or more just to hide from Esau. Uh, he was hiding from Esau for 20 years. But uh, Laban knew that he is going to serve, uh, Jacob was going to serve him. So he gave him the favor not by lightening his service, but by giving him a, a privilege that no other servants have because he's his nephew. Now, the privilege is you choose your wages, you choose your price. Tell me what you want. As long as it's reasonable, I'm going to give it to you. Now, Jacob, being the opportunist that he, he is, we know his story, he saw this an as an opportunity to get what he wanted as well. And, and that is just understandable. He's, go, he's willing to work for it. He said that uh, uh, you ha um, he had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. I will work for Rachel. Why? Because he saw Rachel was good. He had love at first sight. He, he wanted Rachel. So he's willing to work for Rachel. But verse 17 here tells us the contrast between Leah and Rachel. It says here, Leah was tender-eyed. Now, there are a lot of different interpretations with the tender-eyed here. But all of them are drawing the same conclusion. Some of them says that Leah's eyes were reddish, like uh, red in color because they're in the desert and all the dust is uh, 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 destroying it. Some says that malabo lang yung mata niya. She, does, she can't see clearly. Okay? But they all draw to the same conclusion that she was not really that beautiful. You know, sometimes the beauty of a person lies with their eyes. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, about the rest. If you see that they have beautiful eyes, it makes their whole face beautiful as well. But Leah here, she doesn't have beautiful eyes. Okay? In, in, in short, she's not beautiful. And to contrast that, Rachel was described to be beautiful and well-favored. So, the difference nila. One, maybe let's say not so beautiful, and the other one was beautiful and well-favored. She was good to look at. That explains why Jacob cried. 
that explains why Jacob had this reaction. Okay, uh, I don't, I don't know if you believe in love at first sight, but Jacob actually uh, ha, uh, experienced this. Now, um, Jacob was willing to work for Leah, for Rachel, for seven years. Okay, uh, during those times, the practice was they were not uh, parabang. Uh, uh, they were practicing dowry, like during this time. You pay for your wife, you pay. But since Jacob was not bringing all this money that he has, he was willing to offer his services for Rachel. I don't know if anyone here, uh, if it is still happening during our time. I don't know, and I, I'm not familiar with this kind of things, okay? Because, you know, my, our parents always tell us that nag iigib, nagsibak ng kahoy, all of these things. I don't, meron po bang nakagawa na nandito? Uh, si, yeah, si Preacher Lison, talagang ancient, ay, ancient, ay, Preacher Alex, ancient tuloy sabihin ko. Uh, naranasan na niya yung mga ganyang bagay. Ano? But, uh, but during this time, Jacob was willing to do that. Okay? Jacob was willing to work. That's, uh, that's how a man should work for the person that he loves. And uh, effort. If you really love a person, you must see effort on the part of, uh, of the man. I don't want to go too deep into that because Brother Deo will enjoy this. Okay, verse 19, it says, And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man abide with me. I will, as I read this verse 19, a certain person came to mind. And this reminds me of a man I knew. Like Jacob, his relationship with this man was the same with my relationship with this man. And this man knows how to say the right things at the right time, and knows how to flatter you just enough for you to like him, but he's conning you. I don't, I don't know if you've ever met this kind of people, okay? So now Jacob told him, I want Rachel. Oh, oh, that's good. It's better for her to be with you than anyone else. So serve me for seven years. I will give you Rachel. But we know his plan all along. We, we knew this. And we're going to see this later. And one of the most romantic verses here, verse 20, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed unto him but for but a few days for the love he had to her and this reminds me of another verse where uh, another romantic verse but not as romantic as this in verse second Corinthians 12 15 where Paul says and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you though the more abundantly I love you the less I be loved and this is the this is the expression of true love ang totoo pong pagmamahal ay meron pong selflessness. It's not putting yourself ahead. And if you really love a person, you're willing to sacrifice, you're selfless, and you're willing to put their uh, benefit above your own benefit. And this is what Jacob is giving. She, he loved Rachel. Obviously, he was willing to, to give seven years of his life serving uh, a Laban just for Rachel. And it's not as if he was able to spend every day for seven years with, with, with Rachel. Because during those times, there are strict rules that they cannot be, uh, always be together. So that means he's serving Laban while not being able to spend the time with Rachel as well. Because if he's able to spend time with Rachel every day, then that's nothing. Serving is nothing. It's like we're already in a relationship. But it's not the case. He doesn't really know Rachel that well. That explains why during the wedding night, he wasn't able even to, to, to tell the difference between Rachel and Leah. If he had spent every day seven years with Rachel, he would immediately tell the difference, oh, this is not Rachel, this is Leah. But he didn't know Rachel, know Rachel that well. And that tells us that he was not spending time with Rachel at all for seven years. Not spending time, not spending that much time. Maybe he can see her from afar. Maybe, but definitely he doesn't know her scent. Because if, if he does, then he would, he would have uh, uh, known during that wedding night. But up until now, we know that Jacob was a person who is a, a, a person who wants to get what he wants, whatever way that he wants. But the way that he wants to get Rachel here was anything but deceitful. It is honest work. I will work for her. I will get her. After seven years, she will be mine. And this was not quick work. This is seven years spending uh, their time, uh, his time serving Laban. Verse 21 says, And Jacob said unto Laban, after seven years, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Jacob is now claiming what is rightfully his. Verse number 22, And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now, it is their custom to do this, to have a feast uh, during marriage time. And it's actually one week. Here in Cambodia, it's two days, three days, something like that. But here, it's one week of celebration of marriage. Now, we know that in this one week, Laban is putting his plan into place. 
He had seven years to plan for this, and he is not going to fail. Okay? Now, if a man wants to deceive you, especially in this world, if you know a person who wants to deceive you, they will go to great lengths planning to deceive you. If, if, if there are people here, especially being believers, there are people that Satan will throw our way uh, just to deceive us and to get us to, to, to go away from the will of God. And without proper discernment, without uh, reliance upon the Holy Spirit, we're going to be deceived again and again and again. Just like this, this man. And he was able to deceive um, Jacob. Because in verse 23 to 25, it says, And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha, his, hand, his maid for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said unto Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore, when hast thou beguiled me? Now Leah knew about this, because, if she didn't, uh, because uh, uh, Laban instructed her. But just because Leah knew about it doesn't mean that she's in on it as well. Because she's under the authority of Laban. And if Laban told her to do that, she has no choice but to do it. Rachel knew about this as well. But, she, but like Leah, she had no choice but to obey Laban. Now Laban told her, you're not going in. I'm not giving you uh, to, to Jacob. Leah, you'll be the one to get in there. They have no choice. During those times, they have this high respect to their parents. If they disobey their parents, they can be killed. That's why they obey. Even though they knew about it, they were not really in on the deceiving. It was all Laban's plan. Now, imagine how horrible Jacob must have felt in the morning. Right, they spend the night with the girl. You wake up, it's a completely different woman. But however bad Jacob felt, I'm sure Leah felt way worse than that. A man spent a night with you, and in the morning, you get rejected. That's what happened. That is how Leah must have felt. You're not the one I love. You're not the beautiful one. You're not the pretty one. That's not you. I'm, you're not the one I worked for for seven years. And Jacob, through his, uh, uh, fu uh, his fears about this, he went to, he went to Laban and uh, uh, confronted him about it. And we're going to uh, look back into this later. Verse number 26 and 27. And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger uh, uh, before the firstborn. This might be true, but this is merely an excuse. And, and, and what Laban pled to Jacob was, Fulfill her week. And we will give this, thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. J Laban has planned this. And he even knows what to tell Jacob when Jacob confronts him eventually. What he told him was, fulfill her week. The meaning of fulfill her week, I mentioned a while ago, was the wedding feast was supposed to be a whole week. So Jacob was saying, just go with it for this week. Just this whole week, show people that it's okay, be with Leah every night for one week, and after that, I'll give you Rachel. But you have to work for me another seven years. So it's like uh, uh, she got Rachel on credit after this, right? But she ha she, he had to fulfill his week. For one week, he had to spend time with Leah. I don't know what happened. He might, be, he might, he might have pre uh, uh, pretended to be happy with that, or he's just doing out of duty, but just to show people that it's okay. But Laban's ple uh, 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 pleading to him that just please finish this wedding feast, okay? Save face. We, 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 I prepared this wedding feast, go with it, and then I'll give you what you want. Now, let us not forget, just a side note here, that Jacob finally met his match. He was the deceiver, right? He was, he's a person who deceived his father and his brother just for inheritance, just for the birthright, right? And he was a deceiver. And let us not mistake that the principle of sowing and reaping does not apply for believers. It applies for everyone. And, and Jacob, the deceiver, is now being deceived. That's why he didn't fight anymore. He knows exactly what Laban did. He knows I'm beat I just have to go with it. I just have to accept the fact and move on. Okay, I was deceived. I know what it's like to deceive. Now I'm the one being deceived. And what we sow, will eventually, we will eventually reap it in the future. And it is something that will always happen. Hindi po natin matatakasan. That's why in Galatians 6, 7, it says here, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor, you're a pastor's kid, you're a Christian, you're an unbeliever. What you do will have a direct impact on your future. That's why you have to be careful. And I know this from experience. A lot of things I did 
uh, before that are that's still coming to bite me today and it's hurting me and even people that are near me people that I love and I just have to accept this fact and move on and sometimes it's the will of God not to remove this consequence in your life maybe just to remind you to humble you to always remind you you did this this is something that uh, if I remove this maybe you'll, you'll go above your head that's why it's there that's why as, uh, as believers if, if, if we are reaping something that we have sown before our only job is to accept that and rely upon the grace of God to comp- always accept that and move on from our lives and I know that a lot of you experience this things that you did before even if you've truly repented of it you're still going to reap it that is the, that's why as young as some of you are young some of you are old we have to be careful of what we're doing now why because it has a direct impact on your future you're going to meet it again in your future because we are planting seeds today and that is uh, going to be there in our future Verses 28 to 30, it says here, And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. The account is clear here. Jacob loves Rachel more than Leah. Or we might say, Jacob loved Rachel only because he never intended to have Leah. Though he accepted the fact that Leah is already his wife, but he never intended for that. I don't even think he has feelings for Leah at all. But the Bible says he loved Rachel more than Leah. And it's not even comparable. Imagine the situation Leah was put in here. She's the only innocent party here. Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. Because Laban was a deceiver. Jacob was just sowing what he, uh, reaping what he had sown. Rachel had uh, other attitude problems altogether. But Leah, she's the only innocent party here. I was put here. What am I going to do? Right? This is what happened. Verse 31 and 32. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. The meaning of the name Reuben is, behold, a son. Now, looking at this kind of verses, how Leah uh, is naming her children, it has a direct uh, effect on, the, on her situation, with, uh, on her current situation and situation with her husband. She said here, I will, she will call this name Reuben, for she said, surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, and the reason now, her hope and her goal, now, therefore, my husband will love me. Now, the meaning of the rain, Reuben, name Reuben was, behold, a son. Imagine Leah's situation. She's in a household. Her husband doesn't love her. And people in that household might also think less of her and more of Rachel. And now she's like making the statement, having Reuben as a son. Behold, I have a son. Now, maybe because of this son, you all will respect me. Maybe because of this son, Jacob will love me. That's the reason why she gave uh, uh, his, her, her son this kind of name. Verse number 33. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord had heard what I, that I was hated, he had therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Simeon meaning hearing. The Lord heard me. And it still has a direct uh, 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 implication of her affliction, her bitterness, and her situation. Okay? Surely the Lord had... Uh, uh, and he's called his name Simeon. Verse number 34, it says here, And she conceived again, third son, and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Levi here means attachment. Again, this has a direct, uh, this, a direct this, this name is a direct result of her feelings of affliction, of bitterness, of, of the hope that her husband will love her just as he loved Rachel. And they say, now maybe because I have three sons. Rachel had zero. Now I have three sons. Maybe my husband will be attached to me. That is her hope. But it's not happening. Verse number 35, the last verse before we go to our message. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. Now this is the first, this is the only son that she had who had no direct, uh, is, is not directly influenced by her situation or by her relationship with Jacob, but just by praising the Lord. 
The name Judah means celebrated or praised. The change in her tone in verse 35 was clearly and it was clear and apparent. She said, now will I praise the Lord. Now, going back to our introduction a while ago, we're always put in a situation, sometimes bad circumstances, bad circum situation, that we cannot find the reason to praise the Lord. We cannot find the reason to give glory to God. And just like Leah, this kind of situation, there's nothing good is happening to her life. She wants her husband to love her. It's not happening. She wants people to respect her. It's not happening. There's no reason for her to praise the Lord and give glory to God. But after this, uh, after this uh, son named Judah, she said, now will I praise the Lord. What happened? What changed? Why did she eventually come from being bitter and hoping for all of these things until now focusing on the Lord and say, Lord, I will praise you. What happened? What made her, uh, what, what held her back from praising the Lord and what gave her the reason to praise the Lord? That's what we're going to study today. And as an introduction to the, to the, to the main message, we're all commanded to give glory to God. We're all commanded to praise the Lord. When the Bible commands us to praise the Lord, it's not giving us any condition or circumstances when we have to praise the Lord. The Bible just say, praise the Lord, give glory to Him, whether therefore you eat or drink, whatever you do, give glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bad situation, good situation, praise the Lord. You suffer a loss, praise the Lord. That is the command. There's no situation. The Bible never said that if you're sad, okay, it's okay not to praise the Lord. If your husband da died, okay, it's, it's okay not to praise the Lord today. It's, there is no exemption. Our job and our, the command to us is we should praise the Lord. Whatever situation, the problem in our lives is sometimes uh, we're not praising and glorifying God because we're looking at the wrong things. We're focusing on the wrong, uh, the wrong things. Leah was not pretty, but that's not the whole story. Her face is not the whole story. The way she looked is not her life. And, and she's not focusing on that. Now, what held Leah back from praising the Lord? First, she was rejected. Remember the wedding night? Jacob laid with her. And the morning, immediately in the morning, she got rejected. Okay, she knows why. I'm not the one he loves. I'm not pretty like my sister. I'm rejected. Have you all had this feeling of rejection before? Hindi lang naman busted yung pagre-reject, pero mostly yun yun. Naranasan nyo na po ba yun? Like, like you, you do something for someone just to be accepted, but after everything you've done, rejected. Ano po, what is your reaction, initial reaction when you get rejected? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Nobody does that. We might say you're crazy, but that is the command. Even if you're rejected, you have to praise the Lord. But I'm sure nobody has that kind of initial reaction. Leah was rejected. She did not praise the Lord then. And there's no, there was, looking at the eyes, perspective of people, there was no reason for her to praise the Lord. She would just wants the attention and, uh, of Jacob, even after bearing son after son after son. Her hope was that Jacob will give her attention and love. But all of this time, every time she bears a son, she's always, always rejected. And, peop and, 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 and um, brethren, I believe that we have all felt this feeling of rejection. People rejected us for I don't know whatever reason. Maybe sometimes, maybe it's the same reason as Leah had. You're not pretty. You're not handsome. You get rejected. You know, there's one reason why you should praise the Lord because you get rejected by your looks. Is you praise the Lord because He removed the wrong person from your life. Right? Because if the person just looks at your face and, the way the, and, and your beauty from the outside, it's the wrong person for you. So praise the Lord that you got rejected by the wrong person. And, and, and eventually you, you, you'll find the right person. But we always have this feeling of rejection. Now, let's remove it from the, remove the romantic uh, uh, side of this. As believers, we all will always be rejected by this world. Why? Because our own Savior rejected, was rejected by this world. And we should not expect more. For John 1, 10 to 11, it says here, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Nobody gave as much effort as Christ for the object of his love. I don't know what you did for the person that you loved before. You might have bought them nice things, spent time with them, uh, effort, any effort that you do. I don't know what you do. But if you get rejected, 
despite the fact that you did all those things, it hurts even more. Right? And it's, it's hard to praise, uh, to praise the Lord during that time. But Christ gave His life. And until now, people are rejecting that. People are rejecting Him. And in return, the people who are bringing that message to people are being rejected as well. That's why if in this world you are rejected, we should even praise the Lord, even if we are rejected. Why? Because we should have expected this in our lives. I don't know if any of you have had this feeling of rejection, but because Leah was rejected, she was not praising the Lord. Not only was she rejected, but she was manipulated. Not only Jacob was manipulated in this story, Leah and Rachel was mani were manipulated as well. And because of, all, because of Laban, as I have said, Leah here was the only innocent party in this story. Rachel was not innocent. Why? Because Rachel knew her worth. Rachel knew that Jacob loved her. And she even, uh, uh, what they call this, was putting it in the face of Leah. Okay? She was, Leah was her sister, but she didn't even treat her as, uh, as her sister, uh, if, if you read the whole story. But Leah was the only innocent party here. She was rejected. She was put in a position where she had no choice. I cannot leave my husband. Nobody will love me, especially during those times. I cannot, I cannot just leave this place. Now she thought, I can bear him a son. Now the Lord looked upon me. I'm bearing him a son. But all of this time, the, the, the result of the manipulation of Laban was, was bearing down on her that she, maybe she, she could not have uh, 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 felt uh, good all this time. And, the, and because of that, She's not praising the Lord. How would you feel when you're being manipulated? I don't know if you have been manipulated in your life. Uh, again, since this is, this is about a uh, 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 husband and wife thing or, or, or love life, uh, this is exactly about love life. I don't know if you've been manipulated by a guy or sa panahon natin ngayon, kahit mga babae, nagbamanipulate na yan. And if you found yourself in a place where you were manipulated, and that bad things already happened to you, how would you react? Would you praise the Lord? I'm sure your initial reaction would be, no, I will not praise the Lord. And understandably enough, Leah, because of that, did not praise the Lord. And the devil in our lives, if we apply that, he's the master manipulator. He will show us pleasure that looks nice, sin that feels good, but after everything is said and done, you will find yourself like Leah in a position where I was manipulated. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have placed myself in this position. I have no one else to blame but me. This is what happened. Not only was she rejected, manipulated, but she was also neglected. In the household, Jacob had two wives. He was giving his attention to Rachel, not Leah. Maybe naramdaman ni Leah na paanakan lang ako. Kasi hindi nabubuntis si Rachel. And if God opened the womb of Rachel, maybe uh, uh, Jacob would not even spend uh, we'd, we'd spend even less time with Leah. But the reason why Jacob was spending time with Leah is because she was bearing sons. But after that, she was neglected. Imagine in a house where you're neglected. People don't even, even uh, 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 what they call this, acknowledge your presence. I don't know if you've already felt that. Na may nagawa ka, hindi ka gusto ng tao, for whatever reason, then they, they just pretend that you're not there. You're neglected. Pinabayaan ka. Na, na kailangan meron kang mga taong kailangan inasahan pero in return pinabayaan ka lang and, and, and it's hard to praise the Lord during, those, uh, during that kind of time you're being neglected when you, when you, when you uh, 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 expect people to care for you you get neglected not only that but last point here for, uh, for her reasons why she's not praising the Lord was she was disappointed remember every time she bears a son now will my husband love me. Second son, now will my husband love me. Third son, now will my husband love me. But it never happened at all. Every time she was disappointed, she's excited, I'm about to give birth, I'm going to have a son. Maybe, maybe when, when, when uh, Jacob comes in the room, she's all happy, we have a son. But then she's disappointed, never loved her. Second time, didn't love her as well. Third time, didn't love her as well. She was disappointed again and again and again. And the reason why we get disappointed is because we expect. And we expect the wrong thing. Leah here was expecting the wrong thing. She was expecting the person to love her who will never love her. Okay? That's why she got disappointed. Kaya nga po sa panahon natin, huwag tayo expect na expect. Kaya nga tayo na di-disappoint. nag expect tayo. Right? Sa mga nanliligaw, expect mo, sasagutin ka. Nabasted ka, na reject ka na, disappointed ka pa. Di ba? And, and sometimes we just place ourselves in that position by our own choices. And, and, and most of the time when we get disappointed, the worst thing we can do 
and I'm sure everyone has done this, was blame God for it. Like, every time you expect this, okay na, ito na, answer prayer na, wala pa rin. You blame God for it. Why did you put me in this situation? You could have changed the situation. Meron ka sanang gawin. You're the all-powerful God. You can make my situation better. You can change this, but you're not doing anything about it. And I'm sure in the, in, in, the, in, in the midst of rejection, manipulation, neglect, and disappointment, somewhere in that, in that time, maybe we have blamed God for our situation. Instead of praising Him, we're blaming Him. But in verse 35, eventually, Leah came to the point where she was able to praise the Lord. Why? What happened? Let's go back to verse number 35. Uh, 29, 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. Ano po nangyari? If you are in a place, in a certain situation na ganito, how can, the, how can this, uh, this story help you to praise the Lord? First point here, let's take comfort in knowing that God knows your situations and that God sees you. Verse number 31 says, And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Hindi po bulag ang ating Panginoon. He knows your situation. And even though sometimes you think He's not doing anything about it, just wait. He knows what He's going to do. And if we believe that our God is a God that is all-powerful, that He will supply, that He loves us, knowing that fact that He knows what is happening to you, that should, should, should be a comfort to you and should make you praise Him. Kaya po kahit gaano pa kasama ang sitwasyon, just knowing the fact that God sees you, I see you, I know uh, what, what I'm going to do to you. And even if He doesn't do anything about it, we know that He has a better plan for us. And in the future, in eternity, we will understand why all these things happen. We may not understand it even now. Uh, namatayan ka, may nangyari sa'yo na hindi mo mapaliwanag, na abuso ka, or all of these things. We may not understand that, and God may not reveal it this time, but we know that He knows, He sees, and in, in eternity future, we're going to know His reason for it. And that's the reason why, that's reason enough for us to praise the Lord. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 26-30, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And let us not think, never in a time or a minute, even in the, in the midst of a bad situation, think that God doesn't know what's happening to you. He knows. And He knows what He's doing. Keep on trusting Him. Baka po may mga bagay na hinihingi tayo sa Panginoon, hanggang ngayon wala pa rin kasagutan. God knows your heart. God knows your situation. God knows your pain. God knows your emotion. And He will do something about it. We have just to trust Him and obey. He sees you. He sees Leah. That's why he closed the womb of Rachel, opened the womb of Leah. And that's why even that, it is in the control of God, the womb of women. It is God who, who opens it and closes it. And, and in Galatians 6.9, it says here, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God is faithful. He's going to reward our obedience even in the midst of trouble. Kaya ka po sabi, don't be weary in well-doing. Huwag ka mapapagod. Kahit na masama ng sitwasyon, keep doing what's right. Kahit na ma, ah, hindi na maganda ang buhay mo, keep obeying God. Keep on trusting Him. Why? Because He is not unfair. He will give us what we have sown. Hindi lang po yung mga masamang bagay na, na tinanim natin, aanihin natin. Kahit po yung pagsunod natin, pagtiwala natin sa Panginoon, aanihin po natin in the future. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Whatever situation we are, the some, sometimes our problem is we act as if we don't have a powerful God. We act as if we don't have a powerful God. Means that the reason when we lose trust in Him, we keep on worrying, we, we, we uh, put ourselves in so much sorrow and focus in that sorrow, it's an insult to our God. He made the world. Even He's looking at the grass, He's taking care of nature, how much more will He not take care of you? And sometimes, means po, hayaan lang niya, ma-realize natin niya, kaya wala, wala siyang ginagawa. But our job is always to trust Him. Leah knew that the Lord sees her and is blessing her with children, but somehow, hindi pa po sapat sa kanya yun. Verse, and point number two, not only should we 
take comfort in knowing that the Lord sees us. But we should invest in the relationships that God has already given us. What is Leah doing? She's trying to fix the relationship of her and her husband. Which is seemingly now, it's impossible to fix. Because Jacob loved Rachel, not her. She's focused on the relationship that she will never have. She's focused on that. She's focused on the things that God is not giving her. While all, of, all the time, she was neglecting Levi, Reuben, and all of the blessings, the relationship that God has been giving her. Kaya nga po, challenge today, even to the single people, don't focus on the fact that God has not given you a partner yet. Focus on the fact that God is giving you friends and brethren and people in your life who you can fix your relationship with them. Minsan po, mas lalo tayo na focus sa hindi binibigay ng Panginoon, nakalimutan na natin yung binibigay talaga ng Panginoon sa atin. We focus too much on not having kids when we, we neglect that God gave us a partner who loves us and, and will care for us and we can just focus on that blessing of the Lord. Kaya nga po, hindi pa po ba sapat na niligtas tayo ng Panginoon? Focus on that. Now, the fact that He saved us, that's, that's reason enough for us to praise Him whatever happens. Let's not focus on what God is not giving us. Rachel, uh, Leah, God is giving her son after son after her son, but her eyes were on Jacob all this time. He still doesn't love me. He still doesn't love me. God is saying, hey, I'm blessing you with children. Leah doesn't, uh, Rachel doesn't even have children. I'm blessing you with four kids. Look at that. That is the blessing I'm giving you. Don't focus on what, what I'm not giving you. Maybe God knows that's not what she needs. What she needs are to take care of these people. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, wag po tayo mag-focus sa wala tayo. Ha? Wala kang asawa, wag ka mag-focus. Focus ka kung binigay sa'yo ng Panginoon ngayon. God, if you're still single, God has blessed you with more time to, to serve Him. Focus on that. Right? Someday He will give you your partner. Okay, uh, kung, kung ano man yung meron ka ngayon, let's focus on that. Praise the Lord for what we have. You might not have a lot of money, but you have peace. You might not have all of these things that, that, that we want, but we have the joy that only comes from serving the Lord. Focus on that. Leah forgot to do that. And, and until verse number 35, hindi niya po na-realize yun. Number three, don't hold God's goodness hostage to your demands. Wag niyo pong idepende yung kabutihan ng Panginoon sa gusto niyo mangyari. Because kahit na maganda o masama ang nangyayari, mabuti ang Panginoon. Lagi po mabuti ang Panginoon. Nakukuha mo ang gusto mo, hindi mo nakukuha ang gusto mo, hindi po nagbabago ang kabutihan ng Panginoon. Hindi po orke hindi nangyayari ang gusto mo, ang sama ng Panginoon sa akin. Hindi po orke hindi makukuha yung gusto mo, ang sama ng Panginoon sa akin. God is always good. And even the things that are bad in our lives, it is in the disguise of something that will be good for us someday. We just have to believe that God loves us. God loves us. He will never do things to us just to put sorrow in our hearts. Mali lang po ang ating pananaw. Mali lang po ang ating pagtingin. And, and, and sometimes we say, we even come to the conclusion that God is not good at all. He put me in this situation. Wala pa rin akong asawa hanggang ngayon. Wala pa rin akong anak hanggang ngayon. Wala pa, hindi pa rin ako mayaman. Okay? Wala pang nangliligaw sa akin. Hangga, bakit ba? Panginoon, ano bang ginawa ko ba? to deserve all these things in my life. Kapatid, niligtas ka ng Panginoon. He put you in a church. You have brethren are pray, praying for you. You have all these things. You're studying the Word of God. Praise the Lord despite of all these things. As, a, as, 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 as we end here, how did Leah get to the point where she praised God? She just focused on God. Removed her focus on Jacob. Removed her focus on the people around her. Focus on the Lord and the blessing that the Lord is giving her. Read verse 35 again. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. We know that Christ came from this, from, uh, from, from, from the line of Leah. And we should just focus on our Judah as well. Let's focus on the Lord. It's time to stop looking at situations. It's time to stop looking at the things that are lacking in our lives. What all these things will do will just bring you down, bring you down, make you sad, and all these things. Na, mapipigilan po tayo to praise the Lord, to give glory to His name. You know, even in bad situations, kaya natin uh, 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 purihin ng Panginoon. Bakit kaya natin bigyan ng, ng uh, glory ang Kanyang pangalan through these bad situations? That's why we should focus on that. Don't be like Leah who, I don't know if it's, it's of course it's not too late, but it was, uh, it, it would have been better for her to see this earlier. That God sees me. God is blessing me with more things and I should, not, I should not look at the things that He's not giving me. Focus na lang ako sa binibigay niya sa akin. 
If today you're going to think of all the blessings that God is giving you, you're going to be overwhelmed. Compare mo yan sa hindi niya pa binibigay sa'yo ngayon. There's no comparison. If there's some things that God is not is withholding from you, uh, from you for now, don't focus on that. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. So you have a job, you have a church, you have brethren, you have a family who loves you, you have people praying for you, you can serve the Lord while working, while supporting your families. What a blessing from the Lord. Focus on these things. Wala po tayong reason para maging bitter. And, 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 and uh, what's worse is if we keep focusing on the bad things, we can make a decision to leave all these good things behind to pursue that one thing that we wanted. Imagine leaving all these blessings of God just to get that one blessing that we can never have. Yun po ang mal- pwede nating maling gawin. That's why focus on that. God is blessing me. Let's look our eyes, turn our eyes upon Jesus. And all of these things, bitterness, lahat nangyari, will fade in comparison if we see the goodness and the grace of God in our lives. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this morning for the challenge and um, the passage as well. We thank you, Lord, that you're